So if you're in the market for a house or even a condo townhouse this fall buying season, then you definitely don't want to miss this next episode of Selling Toronto, where I give you seven different tips and strategies on how to win in a bidding war. Stay tuned. Okay, so multiple offers or bidding wars on houses have no longer become the exception here in the Toronto real estate market. In fact, they've kind of become the norm in some of the most desired neighborhoods all across the city. And these bidding wars are pushing prices up to new territories that we've never seen before. And in some ways, they're becoming kind of aggressive and brutal, almost like a blood sport here in the city. So for those of you who are entering the market for the very first time, or those of you who have attempted to buy something in the spring, but failed to do so, and you're trying to make a second attempt this time, hopefully this video finds you and it becomes useful for you when you go back out there and try to win the house of your dreams. So I'm gonna set you up with seven of my best tips and strategies on how to get the house that you want. And I'm gonna to lightly touch on why these techniques work and how you can implement them with your agent to lock down the house that you want. As always, if you have any questions related to this topic that we're talking about today or anything real estate related, please be sure to like me on Facebook and direct message me all your questions there. I would be really, really happy to answer them. And please be sure to share this video with your friends if you found this useful. So you ready to do this? Okay, let's go guys. Let's get right into it. Number one, be prepared. Hope for the best, but expect the worst. Unless you're the son of a Chinese billionaire or you recently sold your lonely startup to Facebook, you're probably going to have some competition in the market today. And buying a home is not as sexy or as glamorous as some might make it out to be, as it's filled with plenty of disappointment, bruised egos, and eventual desperation. I can't stress this point enough and it's number one for a reason, because being prepared will allow you to hit the moving target and to increase your chances of success. So in other words, be a little bit more pragmatic and less emotional about the process. Make sure you research early and understand where the market is and where it's going to be. So you can reset your mental expectations and really shoot to aim to get the house that you want. Numero dos, be flexible. This is another great one that goes against perception because we are so accustomed to seeing the price of something and just saying, hmm, okay, here's my card, charge it. But when it comes to houses, most people see the price and they think, hmm, maybe I can negotiate a little bit off of the price here. What you'll learn is that there's a lot of properties that are actually underpriced. So they look like an attractive deal, a good house for a good price. And then you end up finding on offer night that the house ends up selling for $150,000 more than the asking price, even though it was listed in your price range. And then you feel so betrayed. But again, back to point number one. If you had done your research, then you would have known that the sellers have been underpricing the homes in the area and buyers are very willing to overpay the asking price just to secure the house and lock it down. So make sure you use your mental filter, guys, and think critically before you go out and look at a property. It's gonna save you a lot of headaches and a lot of stress just knowing what the house could potentially sell for and this is where you need the help of an agent. Number three, engage an agent. I know a lot of people are gonna say, you know, all agents know how to do is just show properties, write up an offer, and look good. I'm not gonna deny that. But a good agent will understand the trends of a certain area. They will understand how the properties have been pricing, what they've been selling for, and what the general behavior of the market has been. For a great agent or even an advanced agent like myself, I also find out how many offers were on houses that sold previously, because that's a really important number and metric when it comes to new properties that come out in a certain area. So not only do good agents have the sold figures and the data and how to analyze and interpret that information, they're also really, really good at selling and persuading others. This is gonna come in handy when you're going into a multiple offer situation, because if everything is the same in terms of price and terms and conditions, the seller ultimately has to decide and choose someone. So having an agent that's excellent at selling and persuading others to take your offer instead of the nine others that are sitting on the table is a very, very important skill to have. Please do not ignore or undermine this skill. Number four, sorry, that's eight. Four, get your finances in order. Before submitting an offer, heck, even before even looking at any property, 
make sure that you actually qualify for the mortgage amount, okay? So my suggestion is to go to the bank or to go to the lender, whoever's gonna give you the money for the mortgage and ask them to crunch the numbers for you, you know, based on your credit situation, your current debt load, and, and also your employment situation, because all those things are gonna factor into whether a bank or a lender is gonna give you the money. And what's also even more important is to understand whether that qualification is a firm one or if there's actually a little bit more room, can they actually give you more money? Because as we all know, when properties are hot, like they are in Toronto, prices keep getting bid up every single month. So we need some flexibility here. It's not just this hard number that you got and that's what your budget is. And also we have to look at whether this actually even suits your lifestyle and what you're looking for in a house. So get your financial house in order before even stepping foot outside to look at properties because you need to understand the reality. And that's where talking to an agent helps so much because they'll try to match what it is that you're trying to get with what you can afford. And at some point you'll have to make some sort of compromises between the two to arrive at a property that's reasonable for you. You may not get what you want, but you may get what you need. Let's keep that in mind, guys. Okay, number five, conditions. So typically, when you're offering on a house, there's really only two major conditions that we're looking for. One is financing, which we discussed before, and the second one is the home inspection. So the home inspection is almost like sending in a general doctor to go in and inspect the house and give you an idea what could potentially go wrong, what could break within the house, what's good, what's bad, just the general overall health of the property. But typically in a hot market like we are in Toronto right now, sellers don't want to see the home inspection condition in any offers because what it does is it slows down the deal and creates the possibility for a deal to go sour, okay? So what we're seeing a lot of these days is sellers are commissioning their agent or they're calling out directly to a home inspection company to come out and inspect the property before it even hits the market. Now, this is called a pre-listing inspection. What I like about the pre-listing inspection is, A, the buyer doesn't need to pay for this and it saves everyone time and energy so that all you have to do is just decide what you're willing to pay for the property. B, after reviewing the report, you have a greater sense of what it is that you're buying. So if the furnace is 15 years old, you know that the furnace is probably gonna go at any given time. But at the end of the day, you have to assume this risk because you are buying the property. Okay, so still, it is still buyer beware, even though we have all these conditions and everything like that, but you still have to know you are buying this property and you will have to maintain it going forward, okay? And C, the third thing that I like about this is it shows that the seller is genuine, sincere, and they are being as transparent as possible. And they're making it known that the property is not in perfect condition. No property is in perfect condition, even brand new homes, guys. So let's just keep that in mind, okay? But what this signals is that they are aware of the problems, but you also need to be aware of the problems as a potential buyer, and then it's up to you to decide what you think this house is worth and what other sort of problems or breakdowns that you're willing to assume going forward. If you are a seller and you're looking to do a pre-listing inspection, Carson and Dunlop does this the best. They are the best in the city. It's a little bit more expensive. They're a little bit pricier, but they provide you with peace of mind. A little shout out to CDA and Associates. Now, I can't advise in general terms whether you should waive your conditions or not, because obviously every situation is different. It also depends on how comfortable you feel or whether it's your first time offering or your fifth time offering. All these things matter. But all I can really say is, when it comes down to a bidding war, if your offer is filled with conditions and all the other offers don't have any conditions in them, expect that you're not gonna be very competitive and you probably won't get the house. So again, the disclaimers, I cannot advise right now whether you should waive any conditions. This is something that you will have to decide on offer night or when you submit an offer and you're trying to do a deal with the seller. And another thing, guys, don't ask for any weird, wonky, or strange requests when it comes to your offers. Don't ask for the 100-year-old chandelier hanging in the dining room that's a family heirloom. Please don't do that unless you want your offer to be zapped right on the spot. Okay, number six, deposit check. Now, a lot of people seem to think that a deposit check doesn't really matter, so why don't we just put in less of an amount? Well, when it comes to a bidding war, the deposit check does matter because it shows how serious and how sincere you are at the offer table. So the typical customary amount in Toronto is 5% of the selling price. So if you expect to buy a home for a million dollars, you better be bringing close to $50,000 in your deposit check to try to get the deal done. 
because if you only come up short with 20 or 30,000 and there's another offer on the table that's offering 50 or 60,000, be sure that the one with the larger deposit may be considered to be more serious at the table. Let's talk certified guys, okay? So no personal checks. Please do not bring personal checks to a bidding war that have cute little kittens and knitting yarn balls on them. You know, don't do that. Come with a certified check or bank draft for roughly 5% of the selling price and you will be considered a very serious buyer. Number seven, closing date. This is probably one of the least important factors when it comes to a bidding war. Um, but at the end of the day, I would still try to accommodate the seller as much as possible. So if the seller is asking for a two month closing, but you're pushing for a one month closing, it's almost like you're pushing them out of the house and sellers don't respond to that. So unfortunately, because the market is so strong and sellers are pretty much in the driver's seat these days, uh, you have to try to accommodate the seller. And what that usually means to you as a buyer is you want to make sure that you have some sort of flexible living arrangement. Okay. So if you're living at home, then great. Or if you're, or if you're in a tenancy situation where you can talk to the landlord and say, Hey, look, I need to stay another month or something like that. Then that's a great, great thing to be in. But before you go, I do have an extra bonus tip. So this is especially for you guys who have actually stayed to watch till the end. And the number eight point is storytelling. This one is a really, really cool one that should only be used at the right time and has to be done just right. Okay. Sometimes we do have sellers that are very emotional and they would rather choose someone who's a right fit for the house versus just money conditions and terms. Okay. But it's difficult to identify who these types of people are. It's almost like playing poker and trying to figure out if someone's bluffing or not. But again, this strategy should be used very sparingly. It shouldn't be used all the time. So it's important to have an agent that's good at collecting Intel and understanding who the sellers are and how to approach them. Okay. So that's it guys. Those are my seven tips, tricks, and strategies for winning a bidding war multiple offer situation. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you found it enlightening and a little bit entertaining, but before I go, I'd like to give a shout out to a friend of mine and fellow agent Zen Liang. Because for those of you who may or may not know, we started a podcast last year called the Pete and Zen real estate podcast. And we had an episode just like this one where we talked about how to win a bidding war. And strangely enough, nobody heard it. Nobody listened to it. Nobody even knew about it. It crashed and burned and didn't go anywhere. But by the end of it, Zen and I learned a lot about new media and technology and how to implement it. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to Zen for introducing me to all these things and for showing me the way and for collaborating with me last summer. Thanks again, buddy. This episode is dedicated to you. Okay guys, until next time, we'll see you soon.